gentlemen, and thank you those to the organizers for inviting me to talk in a radio therapy conference. Uh, do I have slides? Device. And so my topic is to say clinical strengths of target IORT, a patient-friendly, randomized evidence-based method to deliver effective partial breast radiation. So I was told it was supposed to be in defense of IORT, but in reality, it's in defense of patients, biology, optimum treatment, and doctors. So these are my disclosures. So it all started with this study of whole organ analysis of mastectomy specimens, which suggested that although breast cancer is multicentric, it recurs around the main tumor area. And therefore, it made sense to give radiotherapy only around the tumor. But just because it made sense, it is not enough. So this academic insight led us to develop a new device and a technique to test this approach in a randomized controlled trial with a principle of precision and immediacy. It's taken 20 years. So this technique involves a 50 kV radiation source, which is in the center of a spherical applicator, which goes into the tumor bed, as you can see on the right, and gives radiotherapy dose, which is the dose corresponds to the risk of local recurrence. We also found that target appears to have, giving intraoperative radiation, appears to have a beneficial effect on the tumor microenvironment. And it appears to abrogate the stimulatory effect of wound fluid on cancer cells. So surgery actually stimulates proliferation, motility, and invasiveness. And if you give intraoperative radiation, this stimulation gets abrogated. But is it enough? And that has to be tested in a randomized trial. So this randomized trial randomized 3,451 patients from 33 centers in Europe, Australia, and North America. And all these centers participated in the trial, and acknowledgments are due to the patients and investigators in each and every one of these trials. This is the target steering committee, the main players, Professor Tobias, Professor Joseph, and Professor Baum. Professor Wenz and Max Balsara are in the audience. We accrued between 2000 to 2012. We published our first results in 2010 in the Lancet. We continued accrual to 3,500 patients. That's a large number. And published in 2014 the results of survival for the first time and further results five-year data for the local recurrence. Lancet put our conclusions on the front page, which is for selected patients with early breast cancer, a single dose of radiotherapy delivered at the time of surgery by use of target should be considered an alternative to external beam radiotherapy. To remind everybody, the trial consisted of anybody over the age of 45 with a single tumor less than three and a half centimeters in size. We didn't need to do an MRI. And randomization was to a risk-adapted radiotherapy with intraoperative radiotherapy versus normal external beam radiotherapy. So what were the results? What's the question that patient asks? What is the chance of my being alive without cancer coming back? An answer to that question is the disease-free survival in these 3,500 patients in the two arms of the trial, the lines were on top of each other. If you look at five-year survival without local recurrence in the conserved breast, you find, again, the lines are on top of each other with no difference between the two groups. If you look at those group of patients, the stratum which gave intraoperative radiation during the initial lumpectomy, it is, looks as if slightly it's better, but again, there's no state. So target IORT during lumpectomy is both non-inferior as well as the difference was not statistically significant. Subgroup analysis found only hormone receptor status as an important factor. Age, younger than 50, and note that there are two, more than 250 patients younger than 50 and about more than 400 patients who are grade 3. It did not make a difference between the two groups. Testing the main hypothesis, what was the hypothesis? That clinically occult tumors in other quadrants do not need treatment. This is the hypothesis behind partial breast radiation, which we started to test 20 years ago. Concurrent target was given in 803 patients. In half of these patients, you would have expected tumors in other parts of the breast. 
So we have 2,077 women years of follow-up, and during this period, there were seven recurrences in the scar, six in the other breast, and of these 405 foci, which should have become into clinically malignant tumors, only two recurred. And the recurrences in the two randomized arms, whether you gave external beam radiotherapy, whether target or EBRT, were the same. So this is a concept, proving the concept of partial breast radiation, that clinically occult tumors in other quadrants may not matter. How is the cost, quality of life? And this is published in the September issue of the Red Journal. We found that in this single study, single institution study, it had similar cosmetic outcomes, but better breast-related quality of life. It also has an effect on environment, of course. We find that on average, each UK patient given IORT would save 750 miles of travel over 30 hours and two, over 200 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions saving the world. <laughs> is the follow-up long enough? Follow-up is long enough because the effect of radiotherapy on local control is in the first five years. As you can see, and the same data is seen in the, NSA, in the um, over, overview, Oxford overview, is if you see local recurrence with, without radiotherapy compared with, with radiotherapy, the curves start separating in the first two years. They separate until five years, but after that, effect of radiotherapy vanishes. After that, the curves are parallel. This is well, doc well seen when you do a hazard plot, which are numerically shown in this way. So if you, whatever was going to difference was going to be seen at 25 years is already seen at five years. Are the two IORT trials similar in terms of follow-up? Indeed, they are. The 1,300 patients in the Elliott trial have a median follow-up of five years, and the first 1,222 patients in the Target A trial also have a median follow-up of five years. And the results of these 1,222 patients is very similar to the whole trial. So this is the results published in earlier this year. Non-inferior in terms of local control and fewer non-breast cancer mortality. Now mortality, death, is an important outcome, particularly in this group of patients where number of deaths is much more than number of local recurrences and number of deaths from other causes is more than the number of deaths from breast cancer. So this is what we have presented four years ago nearly in San Antonio, showing that we found a difference in non-breast cancer mortality, mainly because of fewer deaths from other cancers and cardiac uh, mortality. If you look at the subpopulation in the target trial, nearly two-thirds of these were screen-detected cancers. In screen-detected cancers, you find a 2% lower overall mortality with intraoperative radiotherapy compared with external beam radiotherapy. It looks like with IORT, we can mitigate the harms caused by overdiagnosis and overtreatment in these patients. Is this mortality reduction plausible? Well, we know that EBRT does lead to new cancers, and these can be fatal, such as esophageal and lung cancers. We know that subclinical cardiac dysfunction has been seen within six weeks of starting external beam radiotherapy. And Darby and colleagues have shown in the New England Journal of Medicine how the cardiac toxicity becomes apparent in the first five years. You see this 16% is in the first five years of start of finishing radiotherapy. So we wanted to see whether the, the difference we saw in mortality was present in other trials of partial breast radiation, and such a meta-analysis had not been done. And this is published in the October issue of the Red Journal. What did we find? We looked at all trials of partial breast versus whole breast radiation where mortality data was available. And what we found is that there is a def definite reduction in non-breast cancer mortality. No difference at all in breast cancer mortality, and this difference in non-breast cancer mortality appears to be translating to a difference in overall mortality of 1.3 percent. Why is this difference detectable now and wasn't it detectable long ago? Because the overall mortality of these patients is only about 4 or 5 percent. If that is the case, a difference of only 1.5 percent is more easily detectable now than it used to be long ago. So therefore, targeting radiotherapy to just the tumor bed, as has been done by my colleagues, reduced overall mortality by 1.3%. Now, 1.3% doesn't seem a large number, but try and extrapolate. How many patients were suitable for target IORT? In the UK, about 20,000. In the US, 100,000. Extrapolating this, remember, it's only an extrapolation. It leaves 260 less deaths, or 1,000 less deaths, if you give PBI instead of WBI. 
If a faulty car caused 1,000 deaths per year in the USA, would it be recalled? So I think it is imperative that option of PBI must be given to patients who are suitable in the, according to this criteria. Now David spoke about no radiotherapy option, and I found it interesting that he was completely accepting a 5% recurrence rate when he had great uh, criticism of our 2% recurrence rate in the target trial. So in any case, the CALGB trial, BASO 2 trial, the PRIME 2 trials, all had fewer number of patients, better prognosis patients, and had a lot of restrictions. And up to 1 in 17 or 1 in 25 patients had local recurrence. In the target trial, without restriction, the recurrence rate was only 2%. And if you had just single restriction of being ER positive, the recurrence rate was the same as the standard treatment. And so 1 in 71 would get a local recurrence. Now, which of you would want to 1 in 17 of your patients to get a recurrence? So this is a paper by Professor Wenz. When are breast cancer patients old enough to not bother about local control? When I saw this title, I thought of when, I, when is a child old enough to start smoking? So no subgroup of elderly patients has yet been identified that did not profit in terms of radiotherapy. If you tell patients what to do, they don't always listen. There is compliance, non-compliance of up to 20%. So therefore, we need to ask patients what their choice is. And you can give this choice by showing them clear data. Clear data, you show this is how what happens to 1,000 patients who receive target. This is what happens to 1,000 patients who receive external beam radiotherapy. The gray dots are deaths. Orange dots are recurrences. And patients, let them choose. And you can decide what you think should be the choice. And remember, this is all done during lumpectomy. No, no further visits. Save 750 miles of travel. Better quality of life. There is a 15 to 20% chance of adding external beam radiotherapy. You also give them a choice of whole breast radio, uh, type of partial breast radiation. You can show them this figure, which I've taken from Doug Arthur's book. Multicatheter implant brachytherapy. That's how it should be shown, and not with a pencil, which was shown in the Lancet paper. And show them a spherical applicator in the tumor bed and how it looks in IORT. And they can choose. Patients want to avoid local recurrence. They want to avoid treatment-related toxicity. And I think IORT does achieve this. If it is adopted, older patients will not be denied radiotherapy. There will be excellent compliance. And every patient will see a radiation oncologist before the operation. And that is important, to have a multidisciplinary approach. 300 centers around the world have taken this approach in so many countries. Australia has approved intraoperative radiotherapy for government funding, number of patients, uh, centers who are using IORT keep increasing every year when we are meeting in Mannheim, U.S., and this year in Mannheim. Sixty centers in the U.S. are using this treatment, and an estimated 20,000 patients have had target IORT. So it looks like our vision is moving to reality in that patients over the age of 45 with hormone-positive patients could have target as a single treatment, and those under the age of 45 and high risk I would ask you to recruit them in the target boost trial, which is testing whether it is better to give the boost during surgery or not. Thank you. And I leave you with a photograph of Boston.